$9.48. Folks, you saved $9.48 per share out of every one of those 47.8 shares that you purchased. Now, if we multiply that $9.48 times the number of shares you bought, 47.8, that means you saved a total of $453.14. Here's the bottom line, my friend. Here's what dollar cost average just did for you in this scenario. You came to the table with $6,000 to invest. When you spent that $6,000, you discovered you had $453 left over because you dollar cost averaged in. So your total amount of investment was $6,453. Folks, here's the bottom line. You brought $6,000 to the table to invest. But since you dollar cost averaged over six months, you saved $453, which means you invested, not 6000 you invested $6,453 because you dollar cost averaged and you didn't have to add a dime to that original amount. And you made that money, my friend, when the market went down. Now, if that doesn't raise your comfort level, and show you how to make money, whether the market goes up or down, I don't know what does. And if your advisor is not using dollar cost average to invest your funds, find one that does. That's all we do for our clients. It's time now, folks, for Rapid Fire. It's time for your outspoken emails to be heard. This is Rapid Fire. All right, folks, it's time now for Rapid Fire. And what we do here is we take your emails that you send to us and we answer them at this point. But there's a little twist. I have 30 seconds to answer your emails. So we do four of those for a total of two minutes. Are you ready to go? Let's get started with email number one. Hi, Steve, my company has stopped matching contributions to my 401k and probably won't continue. Should I still contribute to my 401k? Sincerely, Peter B. from Rosebud. Start the clock. Peter, first of all, I think that is terrible of your company because what that does is it lowers morale. If you're not getting your money matched, you're not gonna have the incentive to work as hard as you did before. So it costs the money in the long run. But to answer your question, yes, keep contributing to your 401k because you can put more in it than you can into an IRA. Therefore, you can get more tax deductions and set more money aside for retirement. So even though they're not matching, you keep investing, and if they never do match, someday you might get another job where they match your money. Number two, Mr. Keeper, I've been trying to understand the fees that I've been charged. Can you explain where the fees come from? Thomas W. Otter Creek, start the clock. Thomas, that is one of the most excellent questions I've received. There are fees in investments, fees that you pay up front, fees that you pay that you never see. And that's the danger of it. That's why we work with fee-based as well as transaction-based because fee-based shows you every fee there is. The reason they charge them is because they're buying and selling investments in that fund and they have to pay a commission just like you and I do when we buy something. But they pass that expense on to you. And those fees can get up into the four, five, six percent. Good question. Number three. Mr. Kiefer, I'm very disturbed by all the federal spending on bailouts and stimulus. All of that spending has got to affect our economy and the market. What would you suggest in investment advice concerning these things? Signed, Leonard G. for North Little Rock. Hit the clock. Leonard, great question. I heard this morning that the government's going to bail out a trucking company. A trucking company that couldn't make it. They're going to bail them out. Bailouts, it's insane what the government is doing. But let me tell you this. The economy and the stock market are bigger and stronger than the government, believe it or not. They can outdo what the government does. So as much damage as the government does, don't let it stop you from investing. You keep it an investment plan. If you don't have one, get one and get in the market. And finally, question number four. Steve, as an advisor, you must have given hundreds of different pieces of advice. What would be your number one thing to give as advice to someone? This is from Jimmy T in Lono. Jimmy, 
The answer is quite simple, and I use it at the end of every radio show that I do. I say the best investment advice I can give you is take your family to church on Sunday. Simple reason. You've got to have your life in order before you can have your finances in order. You can be a, mir a millionaire and be miserable, or you can be a millionaire and be happy. Take your family to church. That's my number one piece of advice that I can give to anyone at any time. Robert, tell the folks how they can send their emails in to Rapid Fire. If you have an investment question or comment you would like answered on air, send those emails to rapidfire at you, me, and wallstreet.com. All right, folks, welcome to the chalkboard segment. What I want to do here is explain to you how to read and understand your statements. Now, I'm not going to go into every minute detail because I must admit, there are a lot of things, a lot of information included in a statement that really aren't that important. But the government requires that we send statements out, and a lot of times these statements have a whole bunch of information, and much of it doesn't even apply to you. So I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go with things that you need to know and you need to understand, because guess what? Believe it or not, misreading a statement can cost you money. And I'm going to show you how that happens here in just a moment. And then I'm going to talk to you about the frequency of your statements. How often you look at your statement can and does cost you money. And I'm going to back that up with statistical research. So let's get started. Statement. You just got one in the mail. What do you do? You get a pen that writes here. What do you do? You look at the total value of that statement. In other words, here is what the value is worth. And let's say it's $130,000 today, or as the printing of the statement. And then it gives you the previous value, which was $140,000. Be honest with me, isn't that exactly what you do? You tear that thing open, you look at what you are worth now, what it was worth a month ago, and this has been going on now for months. It's been going on for over a year, folks. And I can understand you being under so much stress and pressure because that's what you look at. Well, before I get into looking at the right number, because this is the wrong number to look at, let me explain just a few ins and outs about how a statement works. You'll go through your statement and you'll see things that say $20 and then it'll have a minus $20. And you think, what does all that mean? Whenever you see a minus in front of a number, it simply means that money was moved out of a category into another category. Let's say you've got cash and you've got funds, mutual funds, and you've got bonds. And uh, one of these bonds paid an interest payment and paid you $20. Well, that interest payment goes to cash. But you have an automatic rebalance system or a, a repurchase or reinvestment of your dividends. So what they have to do is they have to take that money out of cash. So you see a minus number doesn't mean you've lost that money or it's been spent. It means it came out of this category. And you might find over here one of these categories a $20 number showing up. Now it's not going to say plus 20, you're not going to see that at all, but it's not going to have the minus in front of it. So when you go through and you see these little $3.65 and so on and so on, and they have minuses, it means they're moving them out of one category and they're moving them into another category. That's simply all that means. So now when you look at your statements, it's, you can see that it's just 